Jason, have you ever heard of Aganar? Uh, no, I have not heard of Aganar, Ashley. Who's that? Uh, he is a polar eternal. Uh, wait, 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 wait. A, a polar? Wait, wait. Are you talking about, the, they're like ice eternals? They live in the South Pole. So that's why they're called polar eternals. Who are the North eternals? There aren't North eternals. There are also oceanic eternals. There are Uranus eternals. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying they're Euro- European eternals? No, like Uranus, like the planet. So there are eternals that live on Uranus? There are. are wait, are there pl- Plutonian eternals? No, but there are Titan eternals. Why don't they like Pluto? Who uh, doesn't like Pluto? The Eternals, apparently. <sighs> Eternals, we're going to have a lot of words in this episode. Do you love Dungeons & Dragons, but you can't find the right podcast to listen to? What about D&D mixed with sci-fi storytelling and some improv guaranteed to make you laugh? Then you have to listen to The Homebrew, a D&D play podcast. Part tabletop RPG, part improv, and all storytelling. With over 40 hours of gameplay by veteran D&D players, there's no better place to learn the game and love the story. You want some space loot? Check. They got it. How about some funny voices? Double check. An unforgettable cast of characters? Triple check. Head to thehomebrewpodcast.com. Or subscribe where all your favorite podcasts can be found. You don't want to miss out on an audio space epic unlike anything else on the internet. As some would say, get in nerds, we're hunting space dinosaurs. And visit the pub on Prosperity Bay. Put the homebrew, a D&D play podcast, in your ear holes today. Marvel Comics fans, you've heard of Homo Superior, but have you heard of Homo Immortalis? Well, you're about to because your geek history lesson on the Eternals is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason, not a mortal inman. Welcome to Geek History Lesson because this is your mind university because we are the podcast that take one character, one construct, one team, or one book and tell you everything you need to know about them in a little bit less than an hour. And today we're going to get weird. We're going to get funky. We're going to get LSD 1970s-ish, Jack Kirby-ish. We're going Exactly 1970, in fact. We're going to go down in some weird dots and we're going to have some blue costumes and we're talking about the Marvel's Eternals, everybody. Yeah, we have TAs this episode. Yes. Well, we should explain that we're talking about the Eternals because that big old movie, you know, the Eternals. Know, I don't know if you've heard about this big old movie that is called The Eternals. That everyone who's not in Dune is in. <laughs> well, it kind half of, of Hollywood's in Dune, the other half's in The Eternals. Well, and half the cast of Game of Thrones is also in Eternals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's hitting your uh, local cinema plexes anywhere near around you, or maybe not for a couple of months if you live uh, in the, not America. But anyways, uh, there's a big old movie called Eternals. There's a lot of comic book stuff about Eternals. This is a perfect lesson in case you want to go see The Eternals movie. And yes, we have a lot of listeners that have suggested this lesson. I wouldn't say a lot. Oh, no? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Well, only a few people. Went, <laughs> only a couple. <laughs> only two <Yep. laughs> went to at GHL podcast, which is where you can find us on Twitter and at facebook.com slash geek history lesson and suggested this lesson. And who are those two people? So at Tony's pep and at Prisma 8's IG, this is your fault. Thank you so much for requesting. This lesson is only for them. Only, for, only for, you. for you. Everyone else, turn your listening devices off now. No, please. We need the downloads. <laughs> I think it counts if they just listen to the beginning. I'm not certain about I that. I have no idea. All right. Either way, don't turn it off. Or 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 do. Don't. Whatever. Don't. Listen to it. If you don't like it, do us a favor. Listen on mute. You know, Beethoven's good on Spotify. I'm just saying. Go to the, there's a good. Are pay- you dragging Beethoven or are you like genuinely like Beethoven? No, there's a good. great. Or are you making a joke because he went down? No, I'm not making a joke at all. I'm literally okay. saying that if you if you literally type Beethoven into yeah. Spotify, we're not sponsored by Spotify, but you can listen to us on Spotify. Uh, there's some great play- Beethoven playlists. Beethoven is great. Yeah. Not overrated. I, I actually prefer Chopin. Oh, mais oui, je pense, if yeah. say you don't like the Germans. All right. We already, look, we <laughs> already, we already lost. We all, have no time for we've, tangents. We've already list, lost a lot of people due to <laughs> the Eternals talk. And, now, music. and now we're losing people for classical music talk. If we drop into a poetry conversation, this episode is how do you doomed. Feel, yeah. How do you feel about, uh, 
Rupi Kaur. <laughs> uh, overrated, underrated. Overrated. All right, let's move on. Oh, hard to disagree. <laughs> What's the next part of the podcast, Jason? Uh, it's the Tencent Origin, where Ashley is going to give you basically the Cliff Notes version of everything you need to know about Eternal. So if you're walking into your Cineplex or you could do a fancy cocktail party at your Cineplex and you ignore the popcorn, you only have the champagne, and somebody says, oh, oh, oh Miss Shaw, uh, do you like the Eternals? And you could be like, well, I do. And here's what they're about because of the Tencent Origin. Go, Ashley. So the Eternals, <clears throat> excuse me, are a Marvel Comics superhero team, a.k.a. the Homo Immortalis, uh, who first appeared in Eternals number one in July of 1976. Simple and clean. I love it. I actually really love it when it is that clean. <laughs> they were created only by Jack Kirby, the immortal himself. They, they are powerful artificial beings created by the Celestials. If you don't know what the Celestials are, just hold on. We'll get there. Okay. Their most important members include Icarus, Ajax, Makari, Sprite, Cersei, Druig, Zuras, Domo, and Thena. There are more. Did you say Zuras? Z-U-R-A-S. Okay. I've never heard it spoken. Neither have I. I'm inventing the pronunciation. All right. You can't tell me I'm wrong. Uh, they were and have been adapted into live action in the movie Eternals, directed <sighs> wow. by Chloe Zhao, released on November 5th, 2021. Little asterisk, if you follow Jason and I on social media, you know that we have seen the movie. At the time of this recording. At the time of this yep. recording, which is before uh, most people have seen the movie. There are going to be no spoilers in this nope. episode. No movie talk in this episode. Don't even worry your little heads about it. I'm not even going to point out plot points in this episode. No, out won't. of respect, we are doing just comics. Yep. We're, we, will, we, we do not want to spoil any part of your movie going experience. We just want to give you enough of a primer to be like, to if you see something in the movie, you're, the you'll be like, oh, hey, there's Zerus. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> and, well, that's my only spoiler. Uh, and don't forget, I would really, really encourage you to stick through the whole episode, but especially stick around for the discussion part of our show because we have a very special guest professor joining us. She is also going to be sticking around for the Geek History Lesson Extra Patreon exclusive podcast, mm -hmm. which you can find at patreon.com slash Jawin, where not only do we do an extra episode for every episode of Geek History Lesson, mm -hmm. we also have a bunch of other podcasts over there that you can check out. And if you're on a tier where you get all the podcasts, you can get almost 20 shows a month. So just go check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's my favorite online community, but I'm super, super biased. Yeah. I mean, patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, you get Geek History Lesson Extra. Mm -hmm. You get Jason and Ashley's Excellent Adventures, mm -hmm. which is a personal, it's the podcast that is personal about our lives. And then you get two episodes a month of Jason and Jeremy John about Justice League. Which also have their own extra segments. Sometimes. Yeah, not yeah, not yeah. every time. Uh, just if we're in the mood. Um, and that's where uh, myself and Jeremy Skinner, my best friend, we review... Every episode of Just League the Animated Series, and we're already up into 20. We've already done 20 episodes. So you can listen to the first 20 episodes already um, just if you go to our Patreon. It's pretty great. It's a fun show. Yeah. Th and thank you all the super friends that support us. Uh, but, you know, enough of the jibba jabba. Let's get on to the meet cute, Ashley. Yeah. So, uh, Jason, where did you first meet in Cute the Eternals? <sighs> This is tough. Yeah, I have no earthly idea. <laughs> so you better have a good story. Well, you know, I've kind of the Eternals is a comic book concept that I think I've just kind of always heard about. Mm -hmm. Like they've always been mentioned in Avengers like and Celestials because they're literally the same Oh, I story. can like almost specifically tell you where I saw the Celestials. For All the right. First well, time. that's a different episode. I have a connection to the Celestials. Well, that's a different episode. Um, <laughs> but not the Eternals. That's may, interesting. Maybe I'll tell that Celestial story when you get to the Celestials origin later in this episode. Okay. Um, no, the Eternals have kind of always known. To be honest with you, I just was never. I can remember seeing pictures of them, mm -hmm. never being that interested in the guy with the blue and red Icarus, yeah, Icarus, mm -hmm. blonde Superman, as Icarus, they call him, yeah. And um, you know, I, I think my first comic that I ever read them in was Earth X, which is the Alex Ross comic, because they are a heavy part of that comic book. And I remember thinking to myself. Oh, they seem kind of interesting. How come I've never seen them in a lot of other Marvel comic books? That's so interesting that you brought up Earth X because I intentionally, in my research for this episode, left off Earth X because it's an it's sort of a it's an alternate universe. It's not in continuity. It yep. is. Um, Earth X is something that we do have some requests for as like a book club type we episode. Should do it. We should um, do it. We'll get to eventually, but I left it off because the six one six continuity of Eternals is 
while. It's complicated enough. And so I didn't want to introduce a new Earth. Um, so I think it's really interesting you brought up Earth X. I didn't read Eternals before I prepped for this episode. And so. nothing, not at, not at all. Never. Okay. I can't tell you if they showed up in anything I've I ever ha- read. I have no memory. Of I it. have read the Neil Gaiman's Eternals. I have now. Uh, I have, so. <laughs> all right. Now let's get into the main meat of the lesson, the History 101. What's that, Jason? That's where Ashley's going to tell you everything you need about Eternals. And if I remember right, oh, wait, tried to play some sound effect, didn't go up. Here we go. I'm pretty certain there are going to be some retcon alerts in this one. Am I right, Ashley? Um, Not really. There is a soft retcon about halfway through. It's, let me assure you, my friends. If you're familiar with our, like our mon episode, yeah. it's confusing enough on its own okay. without the retcons. Uh, but actually, Jason, my yeah. the first thing I want to do is actually hand this over to you because oh. you always really distill down the Eternals in a way that for me, I find very comprehensive and I'd love you to do it for the listeners. You mean sort of their production history? Yes. So we're going to do a lot of production history okay. and then we're going to do fictional character biography. So. You refer to the Eternals as a copy of a copy. So before I dive into the mess of the publication history, I'd love if you could very shorthand just explain that for the listeners. Yeah, and I think I've said that on this podcast. I believe you have. Um, So the Eternals, from everything that I've heard from comic legends and lore, is that Jack Kirby wanted to tell a story in Thor about the gods in Ragnarok. Marvel said no. He took the same idea, scraped off the character names, went to DC Comics and was like, I want to do a story about gods at the end of the universe. Let's call it the new gods. DC said, let's go, Jack. They started printing new gods comic books. Then DC was like, this is too confusing. This is a mess. They fired him off his own books. He took whatever stories he had left of the Thor Ragnarok that then became the new gods, went back to Marvel and said, I want to do this. And Marvel's like, thank God he came back, Jack. And he turned it into a turtles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a copy of a copy of a copy. No, it's a copy of a copy. Yes. Yeah. Um. So here is like the sort of a longer version with some dates mm-hmm. in it. Jack Kirby, luminary creator over at Marvel Comics, who created in many ways all the things that you really like about characters like Captain America and Fantastic Four. Uh, In the late 60s, um, this is the thing that I could not confirm is rumored to have been trying to tell a Thor story. That he could not get greenlit. I have again. I've heard that in so many interviews and so I many just other. Haven't, that, yeah, I haven't found anything where people are like, "Yes, we definitely are confirmed." Mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm. the part that's like conjecture. Got it. So then, in 1970, DC Comics offered him more money yeah. to come over to their side of the fence, and they were like, "We'll let you do whatever you want." The rumor is they doubled his salary. Yeah, and yeah. let's be honest, he wasn't making jack nothing. At the time. No, he was the creator of literally every Marvel character, the co-creator of almost every Marvel character. But I mean, you it, you couldn't get rich making comics oh, no, in no, no, the no, 60s no, no, no. Is, is more what I'm Im- yeah. implying. Not no, that they, he wasn't important mm-hmm. or anything like that. Um, so in the 1970s, DC was like, come over here. We will give you money and we'll let you do whatever you want. Um, so he came over there and created the original sci-fi fantasy project called New Gods. Yep. If you are here for the fourth world. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you are not familiar with New Gods, I would encourage you to check out our episode 173 on Mr. Miracle. Jason teaches it. It is focused on Scott Free specifically, but because of the New Gods, it uh, gets into a lot of the larger mythology. Or listeners, you can request it. You can absolutely do have a lot of requests for New Gods. Oh, do we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It would be a long lesson. Yes, it would. Yeah. So if you read New Gods, the Jack Kirby New Gods. It definitely has some Thor and like Thor adjacent concepts. There's like clashing brothers. There's switching families. All father is Odin. It's obvious. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, But once the book really gets going, it has an original enough internal machine that it really feels like it removes itself from the original inspiration. And you can very easily forget that this is anything like Thor. Listeners, this is why, you know, Ashley is smart. Did you hear the wordplay of internal machine <laughs> she's laying in some track here <laughs> we're actually going to talk about the machine quite a lot uh new gods was planned to be this huge long epic uh but it was canceled and kirby's story was left incomplete mm-hmm. Sad yes it is yeah um after the cancellation kirby returned to marvel comics because they were like we'll pay you even more and let you do even more whatever you want so like honestly good for jack kirby um and he began working on a new team story that was pretty much just the new gods with different names and different colors of costumes are not even really different costumes if you're familiar with New Gods. And it was called The Celestials. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was based on his fascination with a book called Chariot of the Gods. Jason, have you ever heard of Chariot of the Gods before? Is Chariot of Gods 
the novel where it was the first time where the theory that all the ancient aliens, yes. all the yes. ancient like civilizations, the, the yeah. Egyptian gods were aliens. Yes. Okay. Um, and Kirby was, and you that can, took over culture in that time. You can find this very well documented. Kirby was very interested in the idea of earth and planets being seeded by aliens, God beings yeah. or aliens. Um, I couldn't find whether or not, People confirm that he believed that happened, but he was certainly fascinated by it. He was, a, it was enough to make it a story to believe us. Absolutely. I Stanley. don't know why I <laughs> Stan Lee here, everybody. Comics will break your heart. I'm Jack Kirby. I'm sad. Look, you, uh, you were talking about Jack Kirby, and Stan Lee had to come in and say hello. Hello. He had to come in and say, I was How there, too. How are you too. doing, Ashley? <laughs> Do you like Spider-Man? Uh, he's fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like silk better. <laughs> I had nothing to do with silk, so yeah. you're dead to me. I like fat Peter Parker better. Excelsior to one of us. <laughs> um, uh, Chariot of the Gods also has gone on to inspire a ton of other genre Stargate. fiction. Stargate being um, the most obvious, like and, one to one example. And Ancient Aliens. <laughs> The history Which show. is definitely fiction. <laughs> uh, don't Google that man. He's not nice. Yeah. Marvel changed the name to The Return of the Gods because they thought Celestials was too heady. But then Lego was like, that's too close to Chariot of the Gods. Yep. You will have to change it. And then it became the Eternals. So I, I will say this is new to me. I didn't know he wanted to call the book Celestials. Yeah, the Celestials. Yeah. Weirdly, I think it's a better title. Uh, so do I. But, uh, you know, hindsight is 2020. Right, right. So unfortunately, um, unlike New Gods, or in fact, much like New Gods, um, Eternals did not have a long run. It was soon canceled by Marvel Comics and plot threads were not canonically tied up until Thor number 301 by Roy Thomas and Mark Gruenwald going full circle and bringing the story back to where Kirby wanted it all along. Thor. Wrapping up yeah. in Thor. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. That is funny that it ended up in Thor yeah, anyway. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. so funny. So it got canceled and I got wrapped Over back up in Thor. Over the course of like a decade or so. Uh, yeah. yeah, or more, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Marvel's like, we're not doing this in Thor. Hey, maybe we should do this in Thor. Maybe Thor, Thor's kind of cosmic um, I'm not going to specifically let you know in the lesson when we get to that point, but Thor will show up, so you will know that that is when we're sort right. of wrapping up Kirby's original story line. Yeah. Now we're going to get into the fictional character history, so strap on your boots. It's about to get confusing. All right, I need to know about these Celestials. Let's go. So, Jason, I would like you to cast your mind back approximately one million years ago. Easy. Done. <laughs> when, quote... The evolutionary borderline between apes and humans emerged. Oh, yeah. I, Homo erectus. Oh, yeah. I, I was there. I know. So it begins with the Celestials. Jason, what are the Celestials? <laughs> oh, Ashley, is there even an answer to this question? <laughs> uh, you know what? According to the official Marvel website, there is a one-line answer. Well, okay. I'm very curious because I, I See, honestly this, uh, that, I can't answer this. So that I wanted, I knew you wouldn't have a great answer for it. And so this is what. Cosmic beans? This is what Marvel says the Celestials are. All right, Marvel. Celestials are a powerful cosmic being created by the first firmament, the first universe to ever exist. Uh, besides that first firmament BS, yeah, I I'm was, not going to tell you what the first firmament is. I was right. I don't know. It's basically God. Yes. Um, it's basically the God. It's basically, it's basically God. Jack Kirby's hand. Yeah. Um, so these space giants were intrigued by the diversity of the human genome. And so they sent the first host to experiment on humans. Jason, what's the first host? I'm going to guess if that the first host... <laughs> Are the Eternals? Uh, no. No? Okay, I'm okay. I, I figured so the, just kind of seem obvious. The Sorry. first host is one of the four tests of a given race that has been altered by the enigmatic Celestials. During oh. the first host, the Celestial, so you were kind of right. Okay. Select the dominant race of a given planet and alter their genetic structure for reasons that have not yet been revealed. The Celestials use their advanced technology to alter the race into three distinct races. The mainline race, which shows the normal attributes, um, granting and then uh, mutants, and then sometimes evil ones. So... A superior race dubbed the Eternals, who are typically empowered with cosmic energy, are like the hyper version. And then like the bad mutant version is the deviants mm -hmm. from humanity and celestials. So have, the Eternals are offshoots of humanity. They are. Got yes, it. they are developed based on the human genome. And the celestials have practiced these tests on various races, including humans, Kree and Skrull. I knew about the Kree and the Skrull stuff. So, Jason, my next question to you is, are the celestials bad? They are taking innocent races and performing insane genetic experiments on them without their consent. Yes, but at the same time, the Celestials serve the purpose that a lot of aliens do in weirdo stories where 
they are supposed to be like sort of ethereal and godlike. And it's it, it's the idea that like, well, we don't know the plan mm-hmm. and they know the plan and they can see ahead of us. So like maybe their decisions of making the Eternals and Deviates are correct. I mean, the overall answer is yes, they should not be doing this. This is bad. But the story answer, I guess, is you kind of have to be like, oh, man, open your mind to the universe, dude. Yes. I don't know. Is that an answer? Sure. Okay. It's just your opinion. I'm just going to say the first house. The first house is made up of four celestials. And in their first set of experiments, they created the first eternal, who is Makari. Okay. Jason, do you know which one Makari is? Uh, no. Uh, so Makari, here's the thing about the eternals. Their naming convention is silly. It is usually an offshoot of a mythological figure. So Makari is Mercury. Oh, that makes sense. Mercury is Hermes. Hermes is the messenger of the god. He's fast. So Makari is basically the speedster. Okay. So, the, the so, and also to explain that, like this, this Makari would probably later be mistaken by the Greeks as Mercury. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. So eventually, a hundred Eternals were Very created. Very chariot of the gods. Yes. So a hundred Eternals were created. Is what you just yeah. Said, so. Hot take: a hundred is too many. And uh, they, how many Eternals is just enough for you? Ashley? Probably four, four, okay. five, se- maybe seven, like one full seven. Justice League. A nice seven. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a Baker's Luck dozen. It, no, <laughs> Baker's dozen is 13. <laughs> Absolutely not. A hundred too many. And uh, let me tell you, friends, I'm not going to read them all to you or explain who they are. <laughs> well, you heard some of them at the beginning. Yeah, of I'm only going to I'm really trying to stick to the most important ones. Yes. The ones that matter. Yeah. Uh, John Paul, George and Ringo. Exactly. Uh, I wish. <laughs> and the hundred Eternals were all sent to Earth. With uh, three principles only to guide their existence. One, protect the celestials. Two, protect the machine. Three, correct excess deviation. Those are the rules that they live by. Now, Ashley, can I ask you a question based on those rules? You can ask. What is the machine? I will tell you in a bit. Okay, okay. Uh, Kronos was appointed the leader of the Eternals. Oh, so he's one of the Eternals. Kronos, with okay. a K. The, the we do type. a lot of, like, um, like Makari and Kronos. It's a lot of, the like... The father of Zeus is uh, Kronos. No, Kronos is Kronos, the father of Zeus. That's what I just said. Oh, you said the father. I thought you said the father, like, Kronos. No, I Zeus. said Kronos, the father, father of Zeus. Father of Zeus, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're familiar with Kronos, you know mm-hmm. he's basically just big and powerful. Sure. Um, and they became the secret protectors of Earth until Kevin Feige decided to reveal them and completely change the mythology of his entire world. And <laughs> is Kevin um, Feige an internal? Uh, is that where we're going with this? You know, I'm sure some people would tell you he is. Is Hatticus an internal? Like, are we going to find out that there's an internal that always wears a black baseball cap? LOL. <laughs> <laughs> they probably call him Feige, but spell it with like an umlaut or something. Feigecus. Like yeah, Feigecus. That's it. We've nailed it. Uh, well, the, sort of their dark ugly counterparts were the deviants yes um and the deviants established their own dark ugly kingdom called lemuria that's a good name uh jason you've read more comics than i have uh-huh. have you ever heard of lemuria before this very moment most of the fictional places in marvel and dc i've heard about or i've heard reference but i've never heard of lemuria before i was doing research for this i know the deviants i've never heard of lemuria Weir- that's fine. weirdly my brain tells me it's like in the savage land or near like the south pole or something like that i could be wrong about that you know it's underwater now but i'll tell you how it gets all there. right cool uh so now we're gonna get to their first major event the uranos war that is <laughs> uranus but with an o at the end uranos because, again, everything's kind of named after something that already exists. I love Jack Kirby. He was like, I got no time to come up with new names. He was like, I put all my good names in the new gods. Look, and <laughs> listeners, look, Jack Kirby, probably the most talented person that ever worked in comic books. With, so, like, with, we, 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 we jibe in good with intentions. Love, with, with love. With love, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and with all due respect. <laughs> the Eternals, like human beings, were nomadic in the beginning of their lives uh-huh. before they... Unlike white folks, built the first city in North America. Did they? Uh, they did, and they called it Titanos. I was um, waiting for you to say Cleveland because they were on the right <laughs> side of history. I guess this comic book is telling yeah. us um, they're all pretty much portrayed as white as well. Um, certainly in the Kirby run and in the Game and Run as well. Um, all was well. They were protecting like the hill folk, and then about six hundred thousand years ago, give or take a hundred thousand years, they fell into a civil war and a bad omen for the white folks who would eventually colonize North America. So the Eternals are in a civil. They're war. They're in a civil war. Okay, the first civil war, uh, and their leader Kronos represented a faction that advocated for peaceful non-interference. Okay. His brother Uranos, All right. and this is called the Uranos War, mm-hmm. represented the use of superpowers to dominate and rule Earth. 
So I would also like to point I think, out. I think he's, I think he's on to something. I no, would like just... to point out here that Kirby Dunn did Civil War before Mark Millar Dunn did Civil War. Well, not quite, but you know. Um, I just think it's interesting. Yeah, sure. Uh, Kronos, who was backed by Oceanus, whose powers are what you think they are. Is he like Poseidon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, prevailed, and the evil Uranus and his followers were banished from Titanos forever. Um. Again, if you're familiar with Greco-Roman mythology, it's much easier to figure out what their power sets are. Okay, yeah. Uh, Uranus, with no original thought in his head, took his followers to the planet Uranus and uh, smashed up a Kree outpost that was there spying on Earth in order to establish their new home base. So he smashed up the Kree and then like just took their city. It was like, this is my planet now. <laughs> uh, Uranus did later try to go back to Earth, but Astrin, who I'm never going to explain again, is just an eternal. Okay. Um, and three followers stayed behind and lived on this planet and kept the Uranus base, base alive. Sure. Uh, so in the 616, there is a... That's a that is the name for the Marvel Universe uh, main dimension, everybody. There is a teeny weeny Eternals colony on the planet Uranus. Sure. Uh, Uranus did not make it back to Earth. The Kree attacked him for smashing up their outpost. Seven of his original Eternals survived, and they founded a colony on Titan... A moon of Saturn. Mm -hmm. So again, in the 616, there is a teeny weeny Eternals colony also on Titan right. and on Uranus. Mm -hmm. Both of these colonies fight against the natives of their planet and they receive li very little mention afterward. That was the first host. Jason, do you know what comes after the first host? Um, I mean, the second game show. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a host who's taken over a game show. Tom Bergeron. But uh, I think he's like the third or the fourth host, isn't he? Of America's Funny Home Videos? Yeah. Didn't the dad from Full House host? Well, it was Bob Saget. And then I don't know who the second host was. I thought it was Tom Bergeron. Am I wrong about this? Why are we talking about America's Funny Home Videos? You evoked Tom Bergeron with his book, Hosting My Way to the Top. Is that his name of his book? Yes, it is, which makes me so mad. I will tell you this. Uh, Tom Bergeron, totally. I totally think he's an internal. 100%. <laughs> You know, he's aging very well, so he could be. He's a massive Star Trek fan, by the way, too. He's uh, on Enterprise. I love that for him. Yeah. So, smash cut two. I'm going to figure this out. Earth. The Deviants have, quote, in the words of Jack Kirby, bred like rabbits, end quote. And they are raging across the planet, enslaving humans. But there are now less than 100 Eternals to fight, like, over a million Deviants. So they needed to call in the Celestials for aid, because Celestials are big cosmic robots. Oh, so they were being overwhelmed, and they were like, Mom, Dad, please! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, gender-neutral beings, please. Uh, observing the damage done by the Deviants, the Celestials judged them as evil and wiped out almost, but not all, of the entire species. This event, where they came down to Earth, caused Lemuria and Atlantis to fall into the sea and sink to the uh, bottom of the ocean. Jason, did you think Atlantis was going to show up in this episode? I mean, I should have figured. Um, so I should have figured it was going to happen here. I'm just going to put, put up a quick pause on our Atlantis falling into the ocean because I have America's the answer. America's Funny Home Videos, I, I don't know. There have been a billion hosts, by the way. It was hosted by Bob Saget, John Fugelsang, who's uh, a comedian, Daisy Fuentes, D.L. Hughley, Richard Kind, Stuart Scott, Steve Carell hosted a uh, America's Funniest Home Videos, uh, Tom Bergeron, and then Alfonso Ribeiro. Wow. So, yeah, there's been a lot of hosts. Alfonso's got the best name. Uh, I believe that's Carlton from uh, The Price is I Right. I believe so. Or no, The Price is Right. The, the Price is Right. I mean, maybe he's on The Honestly, Price is Right. Honestly, I would love him. To, no offense to Drew Carey, who we also like. Oh, I also, I'd also love to see him host The Price I'm, is Right. I meant, uh, uh, yeah. Fresh Prince. Fresh yeah. Prince of Bella. And I am correct yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, He was also on Disney with the Stars. I hope he was on The Price is Right. He should be. Hello. <laughs> uh, okay, so Atlantis and Lymeria. Sink into the sea. The sister cities we will fell into the sea. We will never mention them again. <laughs> <laughs> These events are accused of wiping out both deviants and humans from the face of the planet. Humans? E even though, yeah, I know. Even though if you're reading any other book in the Marvel Comics universe, you know that that's not true <laughs> in either case. So after the decimation of Earth's population, an eternal named, please bear with me on this, Utnapishtim. Okay. U-T-N-A-P-I-S-H-T-I-M went full Noah, built an ark, saved a handful of humans and some animals, two by two, kangaroosies, roosies, all of that, uh, to save these species from the global flooding that caused the aforementioned continents to fall into the ocean. When the second host departed, the celestial Tiamat, 
my favorite name for a celestial. It is a good name. Was trapped alone on Earth. Oh. And referred to as the dreaming celestial sleeping for thousands of years. I, Jason perked up so bright. I have heard uh, of the dreaming celestial. I did not know that their name was Tiamat. Very important. They have been, that yeah. celestial has been mentioned in so many Marvel stories. So. And actually been responsible for like so many Marvel heroes doing certain things because they're they're like tapping into the dreams. Yes. So it's a cool idea, actually. I think the, the dreaming sleeping celestial. sleeping giant? Under the earth is yeah the coolest idea that comes out of the eternals yep. in my opinion like pound for pound um the celestials are supposed to be gender neutral but they do refer to tiamat as he so that's I don't even know. though they all have big square heads they and no necks to be seen all the celestials look like they're on steroids actually by the way i'm gonna throw in uh, uh, a, a, a favorite a favorite segment here action figure spotlight action figure spotlight now everybody knows that their uh, has Hasbro has been doing these like premium events yes. on their on their website where they have been sort of kickstarting action figures mm-hmm. and very recently uh, they did a four foot tall Galactus which my friends I bought I totally bought because I've been wanting a giant Galactus that is in scale with my six inch Reed Richards enemy for intern Bregg <laughs> oh yes Galactus is going to chase intern GHL Cat who is actually in the studio right now uh, sleeping in the corner uh, he. he Bucking up his confidence against this future battle for Galactus next year. There is no celestial action figure. And I know it would be a really deep cut. I that's the one to do though. I want a four foot tall celestial action figure. Do that's you, what um, I want, Hasbro. And I want I want him to be able to fight Galactus. If you have never seen a celestial and you're really struggling to like drum one up in your head, um think of if the anti monitor from Crisis had a baby with Iron Man's gold armor, I think that's a pretty good description of what they look yeah, like. Yeah, I always describe them as a, they're either like orange or yellow or purple. They're supposed to be gold. They're like solid colors. Yeah. And they generally have like, you know, like Thor on his chest has six dots. Yep. That's those six dots are generally on their face. Yep. 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 yep, yep and yep. that's a celestial. Well, six is a magic number, three is a magic number. So yeah. I bet I bet Kirby was into occult stuff. Mm-hmm. So a hundred thousand years. Later, after uh, so after t- after t- t- went, went, had his nap, he's sleeping. Went like, to sleep. He's sleeping like a baby, yeah, like a celestial baby. Uh, he's not still sleeping, unfortunately. Uh, he's awake, so he's like, he's like, let me out, let me. Out. Oh no, he's sleeping still. But we're gonna talk about when he wakes up. I'm trapped in the earth. Ah! He was actually buried in Golden Gate Park under San Francisco. <laughs> Who put this bridge on top of me? <laughs> Probably. Um. So, hundred thousand years later, Kronos, remember him, the leader of the Eternals. Yeah isolated the cosmic energy which powered the Eternals and he put it in a tube because he's a dummy and it exploded in his face Okay, and it transformed him into a being of pure cosmic energy and it killed him and all the remaining Eternals and decimated the city of Titanos and injured the machine. Okay, so we're finally going to get the explanation of what this is. So you asked me earlier, yeah. what is the machine? The machine is literally the machine that powers the Eternals. What? It's where... Okay, hold on. So <laughs> it's the machine that powers the Eternals, full stop. The Eternals are all dead. Lesson's over. Thank you so much for coming. Jason, we know how the comic booky. The second host Eternals died, is what you're saying. No, no, no. What? All the Eternals are dead. Huh? Except the ones that are on the two planets. Okay. Well, we know comic booky, comic booky stuff works a certain way, right? So we know they're not dead. How do you think the Eternals were resurrected? I don't. I don't know. They were resurrected using an activation chamber, which pretty much does exactly what it sounds like it does. The activation chamber is inside the machine. Oh, oh, but who turned the machine on? The cel- God. I. So, the so, celestials. So, it's just a box. It is a Kirby box. It looks like a mother box. So there's just always a machine sitting around. Yeah. And whenever the Eternals die, this machine just brings them back. They literally 3D prints them and then they pop up out of it. <laughs> They're robots. <laughs> They're literally. They're technically androids. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> they're 3D printed androids, basically. Like, I mean, like, yeah, kind they're of. biological, but yeah. like, they're super advanced. Yeah, they like pop up as humans. Biological, yeah, as, like full adults. Biological androids. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so they all wake up and they discover that the explosion of pure cosmic energy actually increased a lot of their powers, allowing their brains and powers to merge into a powerful entity known as the uni mind. Oh, boy. Now, Jason, I want to ask on a scale of Batman to Onslaught, how silly is the name Unimind? 
I mean, I would have picked a better name than Onslaught. <laughs> <laughs> I think Onslaught is a silly name. There, there's a way goofier name than Onslaught, but uh, it's 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 at. Um, I mean, it is much like Batman. It does tell you what it is. I mean, that's fair. It's just not particularly creative. That's, says the host of a show called Geekist Your Lesson. That's, that's fair. <laughs> um, I mean, it's almost at a Sugar Man. That's a nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So a side effect of the Unimind was the Eternals becoming more linked than ever before, um, if not more united in their methods and their madness. I'm just going to say, listeners, if any of you are out there into um, legal mind altering drugs, um, I just would say that I think some of you should, uh, you know, enjoy a nice. Your intoxicant of choice. Legal mm-hmm. mind altering tea and read some Eternals comics and just trip out. Look, I'll say this. The Eternals comics are, with all due respect to everyone who's ever worked on them, difficult to read. Fall off As the edge of the Unimind, baby. recently read them. Um, but the Kirby stuff is unparalleled for the artistic oh. Um, experience alone. Oh, they're alone. beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're worth gorgeous. Just, if you don't want to read the nonsense, look at the nonsense. By the it's way, beautiful nonsense. By the way, it was actually, this actually recently happened on Twitter. There was a, sort of uh, yes. an argument on Twitter. Around, yes. And the piece of art that was shared is a piece of art from, from Eternals. It, because I think it was prompted by the movie. I, I think, out, uh, yes. I think like Rolling Stone or something put a piece of Eternals yep. art it was specifically like the Celestials battling the Deviants. Yes, it's actually a great piece in my opinion. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. Yeah. And but Kirby also does have a handful of faces, and yep. one of them is a big square head. Well, and the other thing you have to realize with Kirby is uh, is is that Kirby is dated to the 60s and 70s because yeah. that's the you time you made it when it was created. Yeah, exactly. But I still think it's gorgeous. Uh, Kirby, it's beautiful. Kirby has one face for all women, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's a beautiful. Well, face. Kirby also does what I like to call the screaming face. Yes, where it's yeah. like ah. It's yeah, like yeah, every character's yeah, like, yeah. what? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Usually when you're being blasted by cosmic radiation. Yes, it's like, read! <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's that. And um, yeah, there was a big argument because there were a lot of, I saw modern co- movie fans. I'll say people who've not done their research. Uh, that thought it looked ugly. And yeah. They're crazy. Yeah. They're crazy. Yeah. You know? Not crazy. We don't say that, but they are. Uh, oh, they are me. uninformed. They're ignorant. Yes, I. I yeah. but, but they're. But you know, there's a lot of art that comes out today that I think is is not beautiful. Or either. not to your taste. Exactly. More. More. Exactly. Probably more accurately. So. Kronos has a son. Zeus. So that was going to be my question. No. Remember we talked Zeros. <laughs> Sounds like the Klingon Duros. Zeros. Deep cut. Zeros looks like Kalabak, but with a red beard and so, he shoots lightning. So it was a Klingon. All right. I'm going to put. Hold on. Hold on. I, I got to have a sound effect for this. Some, I've got to have something <laughs> for this. All right. <laughs> but, Jason's crazy theory. This is a brand new segment. <laughs> Uh, I was not prepared for that as I sip my water. <laughs> Jason's crazy segment. I'm going to write it down. Uh, brand new segment here, everybody. I think Ron Moore, writer on Star Trek The Next Generation, who created the House of Duras. They were the evil mm-hmm. Klingons who fought mm-hmm. Worf and killed mm-hmm. his wife and stuff like that. I think Ron Moore has read some Eternals. I would definitely believe that. And named that house... After Zeros. Well, there's also um, a very common, a very famous eternal called Domo. So that would be like Domo and Zeros. Mm. Yeah. So uh, get, get an accepted. Jason's crazy theory segment over. Uh, so Zeros, after Kronos' death uh, from taking a full blast of cosmic radiation to the face, uh, stepped up as the leader of the largest faction of the Eternals, um, also believing in non-interference in the same politics as his father. And he was adamant that no new Eternals could be created thenceforth. Okay. Which they weren't like making a ton of new Eternals, but this was apparently a very important thing. Well, they got that machine. They could just like spit them out, like, you know. Yeah, that's true. Hotcakes. Uh, so the Eternals um, are kind of like humans. They repeatedly make the same mistakes from their past. So Kronos um, had another son called A Lars, A apostrophe L A R S. Yes, my favorite Eternal. Who had um, a small group of supporters who wanted to expand the machine and the Eternals. This internal conflict erupted into a civil war about 200,000 years ago. But rather than straight up murder, this conflict ended in a compromise with Alars changing his name to Mentor and moving to the colony on Titan to continue experimenting and creating new Eternals. You mean spelled, is it spelled like the name Mentor? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. It's pretty literal. Yeah. Uh, fun fact. 
It was on this new version of the colony where Thanos was born. He was one of the experiments. Oh, I know. I know. Uh, and you can listen to a full history on Thanos taught by Jason in episode 209. If you want, we're, we're going to talk did about- Did I do a Thanos lesson? You did. Wow. For uh, uh, Endgame era Oh, yeah, stuff. almost 200 episodes ago. Yeah, uh, yeah and also um, his brother, Eros. Uh, we're not going to talk about Eros. No, he's a, he's a, he's a silly fellow. Uh, we will talk a little bit more about Thanos in this episode, but just very briefly, because again, we did a full history lesson yeah. on him. So- New Eternal cities were born on Earth, including Olympia, their home base in mm -hmm. Greece, Oceania, their home base in like the ocean kind of around Australia, okay. and Polaria, their base in North the Pole? South Pole. Oh, South Pole. Yeah, so that's so where Antarctica. the polar Eternals come from. Oh. So throughout this time, the Eternals also have a ton of interpersonal drama, but the center of it always seems to be, who is Cersei dating? Um, and so she Cersei's around for this group. Cersei, Cersei's Cersei been around the whole time. Oh, so they've all, so okay, go see. All of them have been around. Remember, remember like 20 minutes ago when I was like, there's a hundred Eternals? Yeah. That was all the Eternals you ever see reference. Like so, Icarus was there, Makari was there, Cersei was there, Sprite was there. Okay, so, so okay, because uh, that, so that was something I missed. Okay, so all, every Eternal is always around. Yes. And they just keep getting reprinted yeah. out of that giant yes. machine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, high drama. Is Cersei kissing Icarus this week or is she kissing Makari? Okay. Now I want to like sort of orient you in the human timeline. Sure. All of that stuff we've just talked about for like 30 something minutes. Yeah. What happened in prehistory mm -hmm. before human civilizations. Yep. We are now to ancient human civilizations. Okay. So throw out an example. So... Once humans developed civilization, the Eternals became more involved in their lives and they taught them skills like planting grain and metalworks and writing, uh, which I really hate that they teach them writing. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I'm very attached to the humans developing So are we, are we around like Mesopotamian time? Are we around Babylon time, you think? Uh, so we are now around ancient Greek time. Oh, we're a little bit further. Okay. Yes. Right. So the ancient Greeks interchanged. They... Because Olympus is literally like Mount Olympus, the mountain is literally right beside the city Olympia where mm -hmm. the Eternals live. So the ancient Greeks were like, we're so dumb in ancient Greek. We can't tell the difference between an eternal and an actual God because all the actual gods also exist in Marvel mythology. They do. Hercules so, is a real character in this universe. Mercury and Makari, like you mentioned earlier, got confused by these, oh, we're so dumb and we're so ancient Greeks all the time. <laughs> so they thought the Eternals were gods, which I like they low key what? are. But I never considered that, that I'm like, oh yeah, the Greek gods are actually canon in this yes, universe and so, so are the norse gods so yeah the greeks would be like wait a minute there's and two the egyptian gods there's two mercuries <laughs> yeah i mean it's not like anyone had like instagram accounts or pictures of them or anything that's fair that's fair and you um, wouldn't know what they look like either. exactly so this is sort of a shorthand for why so many of them share the same names and abilities not because jack kirby didn't want to think too hard about naming these mm -hmm. characters so around 1000 common era so we're jumping a lot in the ancient world so we're like a thousand years past the okay death of Christ, if that's how you would like to orient yourself for the year zero. Um, a group of polar eternals led by Virico, just, it's just a name, just go with it. He was the leader of the group. It's my favorite eternal. <laughs> moved north into the Americas and became, uh, him and his faction became the godheads to the Aztec, the Inca, and the Mayan civilization. And they founded a new eternal city in South America called Celestia. Cool. Uh, the Eternals battled the Deviants again, and they had to call on the Eight of Thor to help them win. This Beverly. is wrapping up the initial Jack Kirby run. Beverly Hubbins. But like in Thor 301. Um, Dine, I have showed up. Uh, yes. Um, so they fight the... I wish I had a lightning sound effect. They fight the Deviants. Viraco, that guy just brought up, he dies. Yeah, my favorite eternal. So he doesn't matter. What? Um, <laughs> he's going to get reprinted though, right? I'm sorry. Someone's going to be like really passionate. They'll be like, I really love him. But like for the sake of this lesson, he's only around to pass away. He gets reprinted. It's fine. Viraco lives, everybody. Thor's. <laughs> Hashtag Viraco lives. <laughs> Jason doesn't know how to spell Viraco, so that's going to be real fun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thor's memory was wiped. Once the Eternals didn't need him anymore in order to protect the Celestials, because their number one rule, protect the Celestials. Yeah. Uh, so he doesn't remember this the next time he meets up with them. Thor fights the Celestials quite a bit, actually. Yeah, because he's basically a space character. Yeah. Uh, they weren't done messing about, though, and clashed next with the Inhumans in a conflict that would come to be known as the legendary War of Eternin Humans. Okay. Jason, what, you are a resident in humans, for, man. First, I got to stop here because why would you call war legendary? <laughs> I mean, aren't all wars legendary? The legendary World War II. So I want to ask because you're our resident in humans fan. Yeah. Um, 
Have you ever heard of this legendary war before? Did you know the Inhumans fought the Celestials? Or fought the Eternals, I apologize. I know that the Inhumans have fought the Celestials. Now, we should talk about this. That It's interesting because the Eternals are sort of built by the Celestials. Yes. The, they're Not sort of, they are. Yes. So you could kind of call them as like sort of like walking experiments. Absolutely, yes. The Inhumans are walking Cree experiments. Yes. And and and, and the Cree are like I think were kind of made by the Celestials too. They well they were experimented on. Sure. So the Inhumans are the mutant offshoot that yep. they caught. So the the Eternals and the Inhumans are like almost cousins. Yeah, very much so. They're yes. almost like cosmic yeah. cousins in a way. Uh, I have never heard of this war, but I am going to be honest with you. I know the Inhumans are mixed up in all the spacey, spacey mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and I like the Inhumans quite a bit. But you like their interpersonal drama a little bit more, right? I like them as like a Game of Thrones royal family. Yeah, yeah, I also yeah. like them being the hidden city on Earth. Yes. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I like Adeline, them being. Yeah. Every time they go to space, I'm kind of not interested. That's how in I feel it. about the X-Men. Yeah. But uh, no, I have never heard of this legendary war. Of, it, of Etern Inhumans. That it is it. So I guess I guess the real question is, is uh, how legendary could it have been? Not that legendary, right? <laughs> Correct. Hey, super friends. I have the newest prank slash viral video idea for you. Grab a can of refreshing liquid death mountain spring water and drive around on the highways or freeways, wherever, what part of the country you are. Find a road, get on it and drive and start drinking liquid death like you're a villain. When the cops see you, they will start chasing you like Smokey's chase the bandit, but they won't be able to do anything. Because you're only drinking delicious liquid death packaged in an amazing tall boy water of aluminum cans. Does that sentence even make sense? Let's say that again. A tall boy aluminum can. There we go. I want to thank Liquid Death for sponsoring today's episode. They are bottling water in these crazy aluminum cans that you can find at your local Whole Foods and your 7-Eleven. Plus, they're fighting the good fight against plastic. Liquid Death donates 10% of their profit from every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. Now, You may also be asking yourself, why is this company called Liquid Death? Well, my friends, that's because they want to murder your thirst. They want to pulverize your low hydration. And they want to nitrous that mountain spring water straight to your bodacious lips. And just for our listeners, Liquid Death is going to give you free shipping on all water and merchandise at liquiddeath.com slash geek history. Please note, free shipping is only valid on two plus cases of water. So you go there, join their country club, give them your email address, and they'll even give you a free t-shirt just because uh, you say, hey, hey, Liquid Death. And they're like, hey, what's up, brand new person that we don't know that seems really awesome? And you'll say, hey, Geek History Lesson sent us here. They said you were really cool. We went to liquiddeath.com slash geek history lesson and we thought, and Liquid Death would be like, you are cool. Here's a t-shirt. Bam! That's how Liquid Death is going to change your world by hydrating you by giving you some sweet sweet merchandise thanks to liquid death for sponsoring this episode so that's the end of the second host the next era is coming up jason what do you think it's called uh is it the verico host oh man you wish did i get that name right uh verico verico it's the third host he's my favorite eternal so when the third host arrived, the Eternals all left with them, except Ajak. Uh, Ajak is this like really powerful, really good communicator um, who stayed with the Inca to work on cultivation and preparations for the Celestial's final visit to Earth, because that is ultimately they are preparing Earth for the Celestial's to judge whether or not it's worth a damn or not. Ajak was later placed in suspended animation in, I kid you not, the Temple of the Space Gods, where he would wait to communicate with the final celestial host. Icarus was then left behind to guard him. And Icarus, who's basically got Superman's powers, uh, his senses were attuned to recognize when signs of the celestial return would make themselves known. Toward the end of ancient human civilization, a truth was reached with the deviants wherein both sides swore off further conflict until the fourth and final host arrived. Now... We are going to undertake an even larger time jump all the way to the 20th century when the Eternals comics were actually being written. 
Well, you know, because as we all know, I mean, nothing happened between 3000, uh, uh, 1000 CE, 1000 CE and, um, 1960, you know, 1899, yeah, really. <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> so we'd actually next meet the Eternals in 1906, the year of the San Francisco earthquake. Oh, um, was that because of Tiamat? The Dreaming Celestial's chamber yep. during the earthquake was damaged. Oh, I, I see. I was waiting for you to say Tiamat caused it because he was like, let me out. For God, I'm out of snacks. <laughs> I'm just imagining him <laughs> as Nendor being like, Eternals, <laughs> let me out. <laughs> um, so the Eternals were forced to come together, come back to San Fran, form a Unimind and repair his uh, bedroom, basically. <laughs> yeah, give him some new pillows and uh, give him a new blankie. Yeah, yeah. So while connected... Their T- powers. Like, I have had, had bad dreams. Like it's okay. T-Mod. They put a cat in there with so them cu- to make it feel more oh, comfortable. Cutie. <laughs> and, um, cutie. So while they're all connected, their powers are heightened. There's an eternal named Sprite. Sprite is an eternally 11 year old boy. Um, in canon, he's the inspiration for Peter Pan, who used the power of the Unimind because um, he wanted to change himself into a real boy to finally be able to grow up after millennia of living as the sole child in the group. This is your vampire trope if you're eight years old physically, but you've lived for hundreds of years. So Sprite tapped into um, a little bit of their cosmic-y, cosmic you want to call it magic, they don't call it magic. Um, and he also tried to make himself a human and wiped all of his, the memory of what he was doing from the minds of the Eternals so they would never remember and they would also never know about the reactivation chamber so they would think that if they died they really died for good no i'm sorry who again wiped their minds again sprite sprite the little 11 year old Ah, boy got it who is a boy and sprite is a boy in the movie they made her well hold on okay can i hold on oh can i ask you a question real quick yes do you like the name Sprite outside of like sort of Shakespearean or fairy tale uh, stories? Well, Sprite is a mythological name. Yes. Uh, a Sprite is a very, there are tons of fairies, right? There's, no, I, there's yeah, 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 yeah. Selkies and Brown. I, I know you know that. Mm-hmm. And, and Sprites. I love the name Sprite. I think it's a cute little word. I don't not like it for the name of an Eternal. Yeah, I don't think. I it, think there's a smarter name for a short Eternal. I think it's a little silly for a superhero book. It's literally they and wanted. I know, I re- he, everybody they wanted I, to do Peter Pan. I realize how ridiculous that statement just sounded. I know it doesn't <laughs> scan next to Icarus and Makari and yes. Cersei yeah. and Zuras and, and yeah, I it agree. seems cartoony. Yes, I agree. Compared to the other names, like, I'm, I'm not like a fan my, of Sprite personally. Like my uh, favorite Eternal of all time, Virico. Virico. Yeah. Uh, so the Eternals crop up again in the First World War. They shelter a dude named Robert who was one of the builders of the atom bomb uh, and they ferret him away to their Uranus colony. Um, The deviants posing as Nazis uh, at the time, of course, force Makari to literally punch Nazis in the face and change his name to hurricane for reasons. Uh, The scientist Robert that the Eternals have been harboring on Uranus returned to earth in the 1950s and became a superhero himself known as Marvel boy. And uh, even in universe, timely comics were written about him. Jason, did you know that Marvel Boy tied into the Eternals at all? Uh, well, this is the original Marvel this Boy. This is not the fun Marvel Boy. It's not boy. the fun Marvel Boy. It's, yeah. not the, it's not the cool Grant Morrison Marvel mm-hmm, Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, I did not know that. Again, I'm not going to get too far into that. I just kind of thought that was a fun fact no. and I wanted to include it. Did he meet Virico? No, Vir- well, I probably. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I didn't read it. <laughs> That's disappointing. Sorry. Listeners, you can request both Marvel Boy episodes. Jason has been trying to teach one on the cool Marvel Boy for <laughs> a long time. Okay, sure. <laughs> Dude, we have requests from that going back to year one of, of the pod. Oh, really? All right. Back on Earth, a group of human, deviant, and eternal allies formed what was known as the Damocles Foundation in order to study the emerging children of the atom. The mutants. The mutants. Yes, the X Men. Yeah, uh, and this was the same. Homo t- superior. Homo superior, but not Homo immortalis. Yeah. Uh, this was the first time the Eternals began joining superhero teams and getting real jobs. Um, Pixie, who is literally Sprite but a girl, was the first. Um, she joined a team called First Line and later convinced Makari slash Hurricane to join with her. Cersei and Kingo. Kingo again is a character I will never reference again. Uh, become actors. And Valkyr, Druig, Aganar, and Zarin, you really don't need to know who any of them are. They join the KGB because they're bad. Join the KGB? They join the KGB. Druig, who I will bring up because Druig is a character who is appears in the film. Druig basically spends his uh, existence as a modern person um, creating acts of war and savagery in Eastern Europe or becoming a dictator. He's bad. Okay. 
Uh, I think you can tell a lot about their respective personalities from the jobs they've chosen, like whether or not they joined the KGB. Then the fourth host happens. The final host Oh, happens. I thought we were in it already. No, that was the third one. Oh, boy. This is the fourth host. It's a host. long host. I mean, these this hosts... Is- I'm just going to say that these hosts seem very long when Verico is not involved. The fourth, the first one was very long, to be yeah, fair. It was yeah, very yeah. long. So we're now we're in the fourth. We're so the Reed, fourth host. Reed, Reed Richards is about to pop in and change the game. And uh, uh, no? Let me assure you, Reed Richards does not appear in this episode. Oh, man. Uh, I wish. Icarus disguised himself as a cameraman. This is basically modern day for all intents and purposes. Um, named Icarus. Icarus, Icarus. Okay, it's not, it's not bad. Um, and convinced the famous archaeologist. Um, Indiana Jones? I don't remember his name. Oh, his okay. name was Michael. <laughs> <clears throat> Michael Jones. Um, that bad things were happening on Earth and he needed to be nervous about it. Um, because he was trying to like raise awareness that the fourth host was coming, who were probably going to be the Celestials killing Earth, killing everyone on Earth. Or doing the judgment, as exactly, you said. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and Icarus was like, I don't think humans got their stuff together. I don't oh. think this is going to go well. Oh, Icarus is like, humans going to lose, man. Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> I don't think he's wrong. <laughs> no. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh, And then he also made it a priority to reawaken Ajax. Remember, Ajax was sleeping. Icarus was kind of watching him because uh, Ajax is the one who can talk to the Celestials. Uh-huh. Uh, we talked about him earlier. The deviants freaked out because they also knew that bad stuff was happening. They attacked New York City uh, because this is Marvel Comics. They capture Icarus and Cersei. We talked about them. They force Zeros, Zeus. We talked about him to order Makari and Thena. We haven't talked about Thena. Thena's Wonder Woman, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Thena. Her name, I despise. It's my least favorite of all the names. Yeah, because... I think it it is silly. yeah, I I wish they would have just called her Athena. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So Zeros is like, I'm the boss. Makari, Athena, go save Icarus and Cersei. And they said, fine. The scale of this event in the public world, because they attacked New York City. Yeah, how, how how aware is the public of this battle? It's very. Okay. Very. This is like on the news. Do the Avengers show up? Uh, yes. Okay. The Avengers show up a couple times. Right. Uh, I mean, Iron yeah, Man yeah, actually yeah, That's literally happening in their deep, neighborhood. Yeah. Um, but this forces the Eternals to finally reveal their existence to human beings at large for the first time. Okay. So like a person here and a person there knew about it. But Jason, I want to ask you this question. Please. In comics, humans always take the news of super teams really well. Uh-huh. Uh, how do you think real world would react to the Eternals having manipulated uh, the evolution of our entire civilization up to this point. Uh, they'd be very angry about it. Poorly. I think we would try to kill them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if we certainly. I think. I think the United States government would like to throw a nuke at them or something. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Odin. Uh, you mean Thor's dad? Yeah, he shows up. Why? He's also afraid of the Celestials, so he okay. brings his mighty army and the hosts of Asgard to join the Eternals to battle the fourth host. He puts on the destroyer armor himself and grows to the size of a celestial in defense of Earth and fights alongside the Unimind against the Celestials. It's kind of awesome. Like, the art is worth Googling. So just to make this clear, at this point, even though the Celestials have it as, like, one of their Asimov robot laws yeah. to not harm a Celestial. But the Eternals, like, really like humans. The Eternals. They like pizza. So this is the official flip. Yes. They, they have, they're like, screw you, Celestials. We're going down. We're or you're going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, the wouldn't, Celestials... wouldn't have been a problem if Verico was around. Being as... He is. He's been reborn. Has he? Yes. Has he been replanted? Yeah, like a billion times. Oh, good. I'm, uh, I missed him. The Celestials, being Celestials, literally punch the Unimind, and all of the Eternals go flying back to Earth mm-hmm. and, like, smash into the ground. But uh, lucky for them... The Celestials ruled in favor of the humans and left. Of course. But but Zeros, Zeus, was spiritually punched the hardest and died for his efforts (laughs) in battle. Well, he's going to get reprinted. So remember a little bit ago where we talked about Sprite's plan and how he, like, wiped all their memories and stuff like that? Does he do that for the humans? No, 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 no. So... It was only after the injury to the Dreaming Celestial that he was able to finally execute it, right? Because they were all uni-minding. So everyone, because of this event and because um, of all the energy and because the Unimind got punched, everyone's memories are wiped so hard that nobody remembers being a Celestial. Mm. Or being an Eternal, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, he uh, so becomes that's, that's quite an upgrade a human. Celestials. He becomes a famous 11-year-old child actor with a rock album and a show called That's So Sprite. And he's the most famous person in the world. Yeah. Um, I hate that. For anyone keeping tabs at home, this is like the Neil Gaiman era eternal where, story. Where is my show That's Very Verico? Uh, Verico's not in the story. Mm. So Makari 
uh, wakes up as Mark Curry, a medical intern. All right. That's Cersei right. keeps her name. She's a real dummy who runs a party planning business. She's so like she's like unfathomably incapable. And then of this on run. the streets of New York City, she runs into a young George R. R. Martin who's like, I love your name. Oh, my God. I wish. I'm going to put it into a book. <laughs> uh, Athena works as a scientist consulting at Stark Industries. She oh. works for Tony. Cool. Uh, Druig, um, Druig can control people's minds, uh, is an Eastern European dictator. <laughs> okay. And Zuros, having just been punched directly in the human mind and reba- reborn, is an unhoused man living on the street with his dog. Mm. Uh, Ajak works for the city of San Francisco. You see him a lot in the background of panels with a leaf blower. And only Icarus can remember bits and pieces of who he was and what being an Eternal was, but he doesn't have the full picture of it. Icarus connects with Makari. He tries to like explain it to him. Eventually, he convinces him. Then Cersei, then Thena, then Druig, Zeros, and Ajax. And being proximate to each other, they are able to break through the illusion of Sprite's plan, figure out what's going on. However, because of Sprite's recklessness, the dreaming celestial Tiamat himself woke up and stood up out of the ground in Golden Gate Park, immovable and judging, with Makari being the only Eternal now capable of communicating with it. Hey, guys! No, no, he doesn't speak. I finally woke up. There's a funny bit toward the end of the story. I got a Charlie horse. When everything is kind of returning to the new normal (laughs) because Tiamat is gold. Yeah. So they're like, Branding it as a tourist attraction of the uh, the Golden Giant in Golden Gate Park, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I think is very funny and absolutely what would happen. Yeah, the, I think that Celestial like stands around San Francisco for a while. For a while, yeah. yeah. So Cersei and Makari get back together, but their happiness is short-lived by the arrival of the Horde that was heralded in Makari's dream. Makari has been having all these fever dreams because he can communicate with Tiamat. Jason, are you familiar with the Horde? Uh, no, not really. The Horde is a species of insect-like beings that serve the fulcrum, balancing the universe on the opposite side of the Celestials. They're bug aliens. Oh, are they like related to Nihilus? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. That's what yep, I thought. Yep, okay, yep, okay. Yep, okay. Yep. then I do know who they are. Yeah, the, the Horde is probably the most well-known thing we're going to reference besides oh. Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. Cersei swore to break the bond between Makari and the Celestial in order to save him, but she failed and Makari was killed and could not be revived because the activation chamber had been damaged. Dun, dun, dun. His death began a countdown to total global annihilation. Um, And Cersei, so Cersei, I think I failed to mention it, can transmute things. She can, like Jesus, turn water into wine. Anything into anything if she has enough energy and enough will. Okay. So, in order to prevent total global annihilation, she channels all of her power together and (laughs) transmutes her body into Makari's body to join now his consciousness and connect to the Celestials to save Earth. That's uh, not, That wouldn't have been the plan that I would have picked, but okay. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, a slew of celestial bodies rain down on Earth as the portent of the Dark Celestials. Jason, do you know what the Dark Celestials are? I'm going to guess they're evil Celestials. Uh, Yeah, that's... That are painted black. Uh, yeah, uh, like dark purple. They're all like coming in. They're like, we like metal. And like Tiamat's <laughs> like, whoa, hey, you're right. killing my vibe. Oh, well, 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 yeah, he lives in San Francisco. He's into folk. I just woke up. Have you guys heard this guitar music? It's great. Hey, Ashbury's dope, man. Guys, check out this app. This place is like killing it with the apps. And they're like, we don't care. Yeah, really? Metal, metal, metal. <laughs> was like, I let the tech bros come in and made this one of the most expensive cities in the world, even in the 90s. It was incredibly affordable, but it's not my fault. I'm the Dark Celestials Celestial. just keep headbanging. They're like, nah, 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 You know, maybe the Dark Celestials <laughs> are the one that brought the tech bros. Maybe they're responsible That's for fair. Mark Zuckerberg. That's fair. That's fair. So it was the arrival of the Dark Celestials that revealed the true purpose of the Eternals. Okay, I'm ready. That they had been sent to Earth by the first host of Celestials, we know this, to cultivate humankind and act as antibodies against the Horde, not the Deviants, during their inevitable attack. The Eternals are so distraught by this, they commit suicide. I'm not kidding. They all kill each other. What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But as the name suggests, the characters are Eternals. They rose again from the activation chamber. And this, so the reason I'm specifically bringing this up is because when they are uh, activated this time, Sprite, who had done been human, now done been resurrected, and she is now a 12-year-old girl and is imprisoned 
as her punishment for her betrayal when she was a boy. Retcon. Because we're casting the movie. Again, if you're playing along at home, this is- That was is... good, actually. Should, we should record that. Uh, that sound effect. Thank you. Uh, this is the most recent era of publication history. Oh, are we into the Al Ewing uh, Eternals? We're like getting up against the, uh, we're not going to stray too far, but we're getting into like the Gillen stuff. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This doesn't last too long. This is where you can tell, like, they know the movie is a comedy. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Mm. So I'm only going to point out a couple more things that I think are interesting, and then we're going to wrap up. Got it. Um, so this doesn't last too long because the Eternals voted to free her um, because they like her. Um, and Icarus, who was the last one resurrected, didn't get a vote and didn't want her to come out of jail, but was named by Zuras to be Sprite's minder. Um and then we can have the awkward tension of a 12-year-old girl who's a billion years old with a crush on a grown man who's a billion years old, which comics love to do. Uh, Black Hammer does that So does well. Twilight. Uh, we don't evoke Twilight here. I just did. Uh, if you like Twilight, I'm happy for you. The first resurrected was a guy named Fastos. Uh, Fastos is good at technology. Oh, okay. He's not fast. Mm -hmm. That's Makari. No, because he's a Festus. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for knowing that. The builder of the Greek gods. Yes, uh, Aphrodite's husband. And yeah. while he was waiting for the others to wake, he learned um, that for every Eternal brought back to life, one human life was taken. What? And he vowed to end the Eternal so no more humans would be forced to die on their behalf. Damn so straight. he loves humans more than any other Eternal. Fastus saved Thanos. Hey, remember Thanos? Who had been imprisoned in a black hole at the time and demanded that Thanos help him sabotage the uh, resurrection machines and, um, and ordered Thanos to kill the Eternals so Fastus could frame him for the deaths, could frame Thanos instead of taking the responsibility himself. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. This, I'm lost here. He hired, he gets Thanos out of a black hole and is like, I got you out of a black hole. So Fest you owe me a favor. So Festus is like, he saved Thanos and he's like, look, you owe me. So, so, so destroy the resurrection machine. So destroy machine. the resurrection machine. Okay. And then once you've done that, kill all the Eternals. <laughs> okay. And he says, if you do it, it's not my fault because you did it. Why? So well, you take the blame. I don't take why the blame. Why is Festus so mad at these Eternals? Because they've killed untold billions of humans being resurrected ah, over millennia. Okay. I get that. I get that. Um, right, cool. And that's pretty much the last thing I want to say. I made a, a specific effort in this lesson to name check one thing of each all of the, of the Eternals, Eternals in the movies the did. Movie Eternals, yeah. Even if it was one thing. Well, um, I will say listeners as well, um, there is some stuff that Ashley dropped uh, that uh, will uh, get some winks definitely. and some nods in that movie. Uh, I did, again, without trying to provide any mm -hmm. spoilers, I did try to bring up plot points or moments that uh, uh, will inform your experience of the film. I, I will also say, though, I think the, the the one thing that we can all decide from this lesson is that uh, Verico is definitely the best Eternal. And You know, um, I would love it if people would go to the Patreon or at GHL Podcast mm -hmm. and tell us who your favorite Eternal is. Oh, please. I think that would be so fun. Please do it at, at GHL Podcast. Let's do that. And uh, I think we also know that Tiamat is just the cutest little baby celestial. He, gets he is. A, and a nice, he, he is. He had a nice nap. He's enjoying that sweet brew coffee in San Francisco. Here's a free idea, and and, and he's an he loves ultimate frisbee. Here's by a the free way. idea for a uh, like a, a maker or a, or a creator. Sure, Tiamat onesie. A for, Tiamat for onesie. babies, for little sleepy babies, because he's sleepy, baby celestial. Oh, sleepy Tiamat. Yeah. All right. So is that the at the is, the is that the end of this the eternal lesson? It is. Shall we go into the recommended reading? Yes, let's go into the recommended reading, everybody. Ooh. That is where if you go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading, we have a list of every book, every comic, every movie we've ever suggested. Uh, and this week, and Ashley's gonna give you two or three choices of stuff that if you're interested in more eternals. You can read. Go there, click it. It takes you to Amazon. And when you click on those books, a little bit comes back to our podcast. And, and it, we take some money out of just Bezos' pocket. So, so my number one recommendation is The Eternals by Jack Kirby, Monster Size. This is the whole thing. The book's called Monster Size? It is. Okay. Uh, it's not. I don't know why it's not called an omnibus. It is. I don't know why it's not called Eternal Size. Monster Size. Uh, that is my number one recommendation. Uh, that is the best Bang for your buck. Go to the source. It's the most cosmic-y, cosmic-y. It's the most nonsense. Yeah. Highly recommend. Beautiful art. Uh, my second recommendation is Eternals by Neil Gaiman and John Romita Jr. Mm -hmm. I think that is the easiest, <laughs> easiest volume to read. Mm -hmm. um, it's also very beautiful, but in a different way. But I think there's a direct line, in my opinion, stylistically between Kirby and J.R.J.R. JR. A lot of square heads in yep. both of those. Um, still nonsense. But 
easier to digest because it was written closer to our contemporary period. And then my third suggestion is The Eternals Volume 1, Only Death is Eternal. That is the first volume in Kieran Gillen's series that is ongoing right now at Marvel. Um, there are a couple details in there that I didn't get into that are referenced in the film. Um, and it's going to have your most crossover potential to other books. It's going to be the one that seems the most like the movie, probably. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. So yep. those are my recommendations. Cool. What's next, Ashley? The discussion. Oh, we have more. We have a discussion? Yes. Oh, that's right. We have a special guest, don't we? <laughs> yes. Is it, is, wait, is it Verico? We'll see. Oh, boy. It's a lady, so okay. probably not. <laughs> Today, we are joined by the host of the MCU Explained show, marketing director of L. Hoffer Design, and my favorite MCU expert, Susan Damon. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm such a fan of the show, and it's like such a dream to be a guest. I can't I can't wait to get into talking about the Eternals. So longtime <laughs> fan, first time caller? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Because exactly. I invited Susan on in a live stream, so I'm glad that I am fulfilling my promise to that's the internet. Oh, well, thank you. That's, that's true. That's so very kind, Susan. So th thank you so much for listening. Oh my gosh! It, it, and for everyone, if this is your, if you're listening because you came from me, go back and listen to these episodes because they're so good and they're so well researched, so well thought out. And if you're a geek, these these guys are the greatest geeks in the oh, world. Please so. continue to butter us up more. <laughs> Um, just a reminder for everybody, we just uh, um, we won't be, we will be talking a lot about the MCU and like our MCU theories and eternal stuff in this discussion. But again, we were not going to be dropping any eternal spoilers because we want you all to enjoy that movie as much as possible. So uh, Ashley, also, I haven't seen it, so yeah, they're not allowed. That's right. Yeah, yeah truly. <laughs> we intentionally do not want to spoil this for Susan. So, <laughs> so Ashley, how about you kick us off? So, Susan, here's my first and obvious question. You're a huge MCU fan. I know you are a comic reader and you are a professional geek so i also know that you're probably the person who is most excited about the eternals movie in my life there's a lot of um i would say confused excitement going around you're the person i know who's like hype type type what about the eternals property has you so excited for the movie because to me, the Eternals property opens up a brand new door to a whole other realm of Marvel that we've barely touched yet. Because something about the Marvel universe, the co any comic book universe, is that there's so many layers. There's so many different um, different realms, if you will. Um, multiverses, all of them have multiverses, and we're going to get into that eventually. But at the same time, the Eternals represents a, a part of the MCU that... We've only really seen um, with Guardians um, before this. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's really exciting to have a whole team. Granted, the, the one of my concerns is that they're introducing the whole team <laughs> at one time. And that's <laughs> a lot of information to throw at people in like, what, two and a half, three hours. So, um, but yes, what, I, what makes me excited about that is just the possibilities that it opens up for the MCU moving forward. Let me throw a follow up at you uh, based mm -hmm. on what you just said. Um, do you, so do you think that like maybe we should have seen a couple of the Eternals in like one of the guardians of the galaxies movie before the Eternals movie? I, I do actually. Okay. Interesting. I, 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 I honestly think that it probably would have been better for the property since that's kind of how they, they did get introduced in the comics in Eternals one, like all at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, they, they were, um, you know, retroactively a little bit put in various other parts of the Marvel universe. So to me, it would have made sense to at least hint at them being a thing besides, you know, I, I, I get the, the thing that happened in what if that implied Thanos's origin and um, Thanos is technically an eternal slash deviant, but at the same time, um, I do think it probably would have done them a little bit more of a service to at least hint at them the way we had the infinity gems slash stones sprinkled throughout the movie before, like, like it was called the tesseract and it was loki's staff before it was ever introduced as the mind stone so yeah I th the lo that was the long answer of yes i do think they probably should have sprinkled that in before they were like you know eat this entire cake at once um, <laughs> that's a so. fair, that's a very fair point i mean i will say like yeah we we saw the celestials in guardians one we did 
And mm -hmm. not this, the same thing as the Eternals, though. Well, yeah. no, no, but yes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, yes. but but the big, the big like hero shot of this trailer for Marvel is that shot where you know it goes and you see that character in front of the Celestials like this. Yep. Thing, it's, it's not the, Galactus, yep. Galactus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone was like, I had so many, you know, just people who are MCU fans but not comic book fans being like, oh my god, they're doing Galactus, and I'm like, uh, okay. I wish. That's not that, uh, let, me, yes. let me tell you about these six dots, though, friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys. So Galactus doesn't have six dots. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this: like, so do you think these, you know, getting into the Celestials, getting into these cosmic characters, you, you talked about it opening a door. Um, do you think, you know, the 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 most cosmic-y we've ever gotten so far has been like Thanos and mm -hmm. the Infinity Gems, mm -hmm. and now by moving into Celestials, yeah, we're getting into these larger than life physically mm -hmm. Marvel characters of mm -hmm. like eternity and the Celestial and he, yeah. And I, I honestly, the, when I saw the Celestials in the trailer and featured very prominently, my first thought was, I was like, Oh, this is how they're going to low key introduce Galactus. This is how they're going to get everybody on board with. There's a giant purple guy out there that wears purple underwear and eats planets like they're donuts. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> um, so like, I mean, yeah. Do you, do you, do you think that's, this is their way of opening that door and this is the direction of the MCU is going full on deep Kirby cosmic. I, I mean, everything we've seen so far kind of hints towards that direction, you know, like multiverse of madness is definitely hinting in that direction. Um, even stuff that we saw at, in the, um, post credit scene of WandaVision. Um, I was wondering how long it was going to take you to evoke Doctor Strange. I, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally staring at like a quarter scale statue of him right now. So he's like, you know, he, he, he's guiding me. He's influencing my answers. But yes, um, do, to, as soon as Doctor Strange hit the scene, even in that one line in Winter Soldier, when they said Stephen Strange, I, my mind just like blew up in a thousand directions. I never thought I'd get a Doctor Strange movie, let alone him kind of helping, you know, he seems to be helping out Spider-Man in No Way Home. And now he's going to be with Scarlet Witch and basically every other Marvel character that's ever existed in Multiverse of Madness. So yes, I'm very excited about him taking the helm. I love the idea of a Kirby-esque celestial Gal like Galactus galaxy type situation. Um, it, it would be a nice, not that I'm, I, obviously, I love the Infinity Saga. It's like one of it's. Oh, I can't believe we ever got to see that in our lifetime. Like, how lucky are we? No, very true. I mean, the, <laughs> right. I mean, I probably watch Portals like once every two months. It's easy. Like, right. like oh yeah, I want to watch that fight where literally a thousand Marvel characters show up. Yeah, exactly, for sure. And um, so yes, I would love. I love the idea of that, of it going in that direction for something very new and different in the MCU because. You know, we've spent so much time on Earth and Marvel is a lot of times not on Earth. <laughs> so it's great to have the the um, almost splitting the difference between what we have going on on Earth, where you see like Falcon and the Winter Soldier and um, uh, some of the other movies that are taking place with the like the next generation of Avengers, Hawkeye, things like that. And then also going into Loki and variants and like, what what is that? So I love I love that we're getting we're getting weird with Marvel the way it was always intended to be. So I have to ask you this. Do we think that the Eternals are too powerful for the current MCU because they're really strong in the comics? <laughs> yeah, they can basically do anything. Yeah, um, <laughs> they're, they are invincible. In yeah, the comic books, and I mean, basically, yeah, they're like gods ish. You know, they're the direct descendants of Celestials. That would have been a great title for this movie. God's ish. God's basically. <laughs> we're basically God. -ish, yeah. <laughs> that's my Marvel's next God ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be my next job. Taglines for Marvel movies. God ish. I mean, it Doctor would be Strange. a perfect He's job for you. Weird. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, Susan. I'm Kevin Feige. Hello, how nice to meet you. Nice baseball uh, cast. Okay, I, I. Hello, hello. I need a tagline for the Fantastic Four, and I need it now. So let's let's hear your best shots. Let's go. <laughs> Oh my God! Please, why haven't you done it yet? That's what it should be like. Why haven't Four? Why hasn't it been? Why haven't you done it yet? I like it. In all right, Marvel's Fantastic Four. Why haven't we done it yet? And there's an orange rock creature. You know? Which I really hope they CGI. Like, can we do like um, the way they did Banner Hulk in Endgame, but like thing all the time? Like Ben Grimm needs to be done that way. I'm sorry. I agree. Like, I don't. I, I don't want. I don't want some like 
sponge looking costume. It can't happen. I want the kids. That's what I want from fantasy. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, of Susan, course you do. Is there and an X twenty three babysitting them? That one yes. random issue, oh that my gosh. filler issue of Laura babysitting the kids. I want that as like an episode of something. Oh, somewhere. you nerds! Anyway. All right. Um, <laughs> so, Susan, is there a character of the Eternals that you're really looking forward to in this movie? And, and then I also uh, the follow up is there a Marvel character that is not the Eternals that you're really looking forward to them sneaking into the MCU very soon? Okay, well, since I just mentioned her, I really, really want, um, like, a Wolverine movie that's Laura Kinney. That's, like, one of my dream situations. And obviously, I'm going backwards from, um, you know, taking it into space because obviously she's a very (laughs) Earth-based character. Um, Her and then I I would love to see Silk show up in the Spider-Verse. That would be great um, since they already kind of teased her in the first Spider-Man movie. Um, so those are the, my two girls that I, I, I need to show up at some point, but then who am I excited about in Eternals? I'm very excited to see, um, I'm very excited to see Cersei Mm -hmm. and I'm very excited to see Icarus and I love their relationship and the fact that they're now, um, being played by real life kind of best friends who grew up essentially together in the acting world. And this is their first time working together. Um, uh, I'm totally blanking on his name. I'm just like Richard. Rob Stark. Richard yeah, I was like, I was like Rob Stark. Rob yep. Stark. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> and excuse Gemma me. Tan. BBC's the bodyguard. Not Kit Harrington yes. from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Not Kit Harrington. The other. The other one. Um, <laughs> the, the better actor. I'll say it on the record. <laughs> yeah. The better actor. And I will say this on the record too. Richard Madden and Rocket Man deserved better than it got because he was so good at being the worst <laughs> oh, in Rocket Man. So- Somewhere, uh, previous guest Victoria Molly is screaming in agreement. I'm certain. Oh my god. Okay, good. I'm glad. I was like, oh no, did I just like start a war with someone? <laughs> anyway, yes. Um, I love Richard Madden. Love Icarus. I am really interested in the Superman comparison that keeps getting made from everybody mm-hmm. about it because, like, I wouldn't ever really necessarily think of him as a Superman character. Other than like the power ish. So I keep saying ish, but like they are ish similarities Um, in the way that they both have sort of the generic catch all superhero power set. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of character, they're very different. Yeah. One is blonde. They're Uh, obviously different. I will will say this. God, I love you. (laughs) Before this movie, I would have never considered Richard Madden for Superman. But now you don't want a Scottish. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Well, listen, let me finish, please. Now that I've seen him in this movie, I kind of think, yeah, he would have been a good Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, like I'm kind of like, I think he would have been a pretty good Superman. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That's all we'll, that's because, all we'll say about the movie. Okay, now I'm going to think about that because honestly, when the Superman comparison happened, I was like, really? No, not Richard Madden. <laughs> okay. Sure. All right. So as we wrap up our discussion portion, I have like a slightly off topic, but kind of on topic question for you, Susan. And I just want to know you're the biggest Scarlet Witch fan in my life. So let's go crazy fan theory. How do you think Wanda will first encounter the Eternals? Oh, my God. I, like you you said that. And I honestly started tearing up because that means so much to me. <laughs> it's true. Like, Wanda has gotten me like as a character from comics to screen has gotten a lot of people through so much, including this pandemic. So to be the biggest Scarlet Witch fan at this point means a lot. Um, but oh, how will she encounter the Eternals? My, my honest to God answer is she 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 F's up mm-hmm. somehow because <laughs> She's still one of the things that they've done really well with Wanda in the MCU is they've maintained this almost um, I don't want to say naivete about her, but there's definitely a like she's so powerful and she embraces that power, but she embraces that power in her own personal way, as opposed to embracing it on a larger scale. She can do it when she's motivated properly, like um, her friends are being hurt or um you know, <laughs> the man that she loves was killed by, <laughs> I almost called him a purple gremlin, but yeah, that's kind of accurate. Yeah. He, uh, is, a Calif- <laughs> he is a California raisin. <laughs> he is. He yeah. is. And <laughs> when Star-Lord called him Grimace, I was like, yep, that actually, yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. Grimace gone bad. Um, but I think that she, do- that she does something to mess up in order 
for the Eternals to encounter her. Um, either that or, again, motivated by love for her family, um, for Vision, for her friends, um, she does something too powerful once again. Because she has, we haven't even touched on half of the powers that Scarlet mm-hmm. Witch has. So my guess is she taps into something that we haven't seen yet, and someone has to do something about it. All right, Susan, since you are your MCU expert, I'm going to add a bonus question that Ashley doesn't know about. But the, oh, gosh. But <laughs> because you host a show called the MCU Explain Show, mm. I am going to put you on the spot. Because... Explain the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it, by the way? <laughs> um, it's a ton of movies that everybody should watch immediately if you haven't. And if you have, what's your favorite one? I want to know. I almost treat oh, it I as thought a it was personality a pill. test. <laughs> no, it kind of is. It's like the red, <laughs> red blue pill situation. Like, do you want to go down this rabbit do hole? Do you want to know our favorite <laughs> MCU movies? Hmm? Is that where that is a real question? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I do. I would love to know your favorite MCU movies. It, it, to me, it, it almost works like... Um, it like is a person, how, yeah, it's yeah, a personality it's a, test, yeah. It is a personality test at this point because there's so many of them, and whichever I feel like you can figure out sort of what drives a person. Because like, if anyway, tell me, and then I'll say my analysis. Oh, this is a tarot reading. Th- this is uh, with MCU movies. I love that. This is easy peasy for me. It's uh, it's Captain America: The Winter Soldier. That's definitely <sighs> far and away my faves. I uh, who the hell is Bucky gets me every single time. It's amazing. Mine is uh, still. Iron Man one oh, and throwing I, all the way back with, with a close second being Dr. Strange. <gasps> yeah. I love Dr. Strange. <laughs> I lo- well, yeah. obviously that's my number one by yeah. far, <laughs> by far. Yeah. but no, my number two is actually winter soldier as well. Ashley. High five. Uh, high five. <laughs> yeah. So Jason, what you still liking Iron Man one after all these years says to me about you is that I know, I know Ashley better than I know you, but I think that liking Iron Man one, after all this time says that you are kind of like a more classic person in general, um, that you enjoy things, um, analyzing things, seeing how they work, possibly breaking down your fandom with uh, using two different sides, one side being passion and the other side being knowledge. And that is just a really great dichotomy to have in a fan because it means you're really inclusive and you're always going to love whatever starting off point someone has, regardless of how they got into that fandom. And so, yeah, that's what it says to me about you. Oh, well, nice. That's very kind of you. You know, I am, I am surround, surround, sur- no, excuse me. I am surrounded by several classical leather bound books of uh, mm. Britannica's and knowledge. So yes, mm. I am a very classical. <laughs> uh, but the, the question, I, I, that's a very interesting conversation. Cause you said your Susan, yours was, uh, I forget. Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange. And then winter soldier is a second. Mm-hmm. Um, so the question I wanted to throw a curveball at you is we get asked all the time. How are, are the X-Men going to be introduced oh. <laughs> into the Marvel cinematic universe? Oh. And you as the host of the MCU explain show podcast, I want to hear your theory. How do you think they're going to do it? I've gone through like several versions of this in my brain. Same. How I, like how, <laughs> cause they could do it in so many different ways. I mean, there are some people who think, yes, you bring in the fantastic four and then you open it up that way. Um, knowing professor X and Reed Richards relationship. And I was like, okay, well that seems really lame. <laughs> um, I would do it in a way that like, Professor X has almost been here all along again. I like that because one of the things I love about a hosting MC explained, but B the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole are Easter eggs and um, the way they throw back to you can watch or, or, yeah, the way that they do this thing for like if you've been a fan of the comics your entire life, you can see all these different little things that they put in there that show you they really care about us as fans like uh, us lifers. But at the same time, I can show these movies like my mom, who's never read a comic in her life, and she can like flip her lid over how cool they are. So I I love both sides of that. So I would love it if um, they were able to sneak in some X-Men stuff starting now. Now they they have Fox. They have the property. Start 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 it now. Start showing us that they exist, maybe even with Eternals. There could be a branch off because, you know, the the Celestials made the Eternals and the Eternals, they say in some versions of the origin story are how humans evolved mm-hmm. to have certain powers. Right. So maybe the mutants come through the Eternals. 
that would be a great way to do it too. Maybe Scarlet Witch does a reverse House of M and she makes the uh, all makes, the, all the mutants. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> like instead of no more mutants, be like make us mutants. Like I don't I don't know so, something like that. They love to do reversals in the MCU of things like that. So it wouldn't surprise me if they use Scarlet Witch, who was a member of the X team for you know. Ever. I can't even tell you how long because it's just a lot of time. Too many years. Uh, yes, too many years. And she's a crossover <laughs> Avenger X-Men. Mm -hmm. So it would be great to have her be a part of bringing mutants into the MCU. So, yeah, Scarlet Witch would be great. I'd love to see them come through the Eternals. Something with the Celestials evolution wise. I love the science behind the X-Men. So if they wanted to do a scientific side to the MCU with them, that'd be great, too. Interesting. Well, I yeah. think those are all great theories. Well, Susan, thank you so much for talking to us about Eternals. Uh, let everybody know where they can find you online and let everybody know where they can listen to you on the MCU Explained show. Or have you got uh, anything cool projects coming up or anything like that? Oh, my gosh. Um, no, the MCU Explained show is on a bit of a hiatus until the uh, oh, until Hawkeye right now. So we'll start back up again at Hawkeye and you can find us at MCU underscore explained everywhere. Twitter, Facebook, um, What's the other one? Instagram. <laughs> you know, the most <laughs> popular one. Instagram. Um, and then me personally, I'm at Blue Susan, spelled B-L-O-O, -O, like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. So that's B-L-O-O-S-U-S-A-N. And that's also across platforms. So that's where you can find me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel like... I, I truly, I feel like I know you better now, even though I know you and Ashley know each other really well. I feel like Susan, we became friends. And I do. I, I think we're 100% friends. By the way, I didn't tell, I didn't tell Ashley this, but I mean, I was going to bring on Kit Harrington, but then you both insulted him on the air and he, <laughs> and he hung up. He Let me tell you, up. I don't know what I would do if that were the case. <laughs> if that were the case, I'd be like, can I talk to Rose Leslie? Because I'm, I think she's super interesting and I would love to see her in the MCU. So can we oh, figure out yes. how to get her in? <laughs> I would, you. I'd be down for that. Every, She'd be a yep. great Sue Storm. There we go. Mic drop. I, yeah, oh, really? She, oh, sure. She's, would, I'd like Sue Storm to be a little bit older, but I think she'd be great. Yeah, yeah. sure. Why yeah. not? Why not? I like the idea of the Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Sue Storm. Um, and then R Reed Richards idea happening. That's my take on it. I know that's like a real generalized. Everybody wants that, but I can't get it out of my head. I've been pushing for Raul Coley as Reed Richards. Ooh. Okay. If Raul Coley <laughs> ever, since does... ever since Midnight Mass, I've been Raul Coley. <laughs> right. It's Coley, excuse me. Yeah. If Raul Coley <laughs> is um, Reed Richards, then Rose Leslie would be an excellent Sue Storm opposite him. I think Ooh. we just think of those two acting together, man. Well, like, I, th I think we just did it. All right, Kevin yeah. Feige, again, good call, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Feige, come on. All right, all right well, thank you happen. thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Geekers Lesson, Susan. Yeah, thank you for having me. I had so much fun. Well, everybody, that was a great discussion. I don't know about you, but I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. What's, not, could have been some more Verico talk. Either, so. Not enough Verico talk. <laughs> What's right. next? Uh, I don't know, Ashley. What's next? You're the uh, teaching tweet. Oh, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at GHL Podcast, everybody, that's our Twitter. Uh, we're going to sum up the lesson in 140 characters, 276 characters, uh, 1,056 characters. How many characters Twitter has anymore? Who knows? Uh, you can go find this tweet. Ashley's going to sum up everything you know about Eternals in a tweet. Uh, take it away, Ashley. Thor plus New Gods minus DC Comics equals the Eternals. It's a mathematical equation. <laughs> it's going to confuse Twitter, I think. Yeah, probably they don't understand math over there. We'll be like, do you want a hashtag in here? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, next is the honor roll where if you go over to Apple podcast and you leave us a five star review, we will read whatever you write on the podcast for you helping us in the Apple podcast algorithm. Oh, by the way, international listeners, um, if you do an international review, a five star review, you're going to have to take a screenshot and email it to us at geekishlesson at gmail.com. Yes. But we'll, also, ha we'll happily read those. Please two. tell us where you're from because some people don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just guessing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Who's joining the honor roll this week? Joining the honor roll this week is Las Vegas local guy. And <laughs> that's a good username. He says, like a warm, geeky hug. Oh. I have loved this podcast for years and I'm just now getting around to giving it a much deserved five star review. 
What prompted me to finally write it? Like it has been for many people over the past year, the pandemic uprooted my life and found me having to start over in a new career on the other side of the country and moving away from my tribe of nerdy friends. 36 hours of driving with Jason and Ashley's insightful, funny, and sometimes <laughs> spicy takes. I'm with you, Ashley Reed Richards is a monster. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was the perfect bomb to keep me entertained, laughing, and remind me there's always... Tons of good things to look forward to. Hashtag HanCon 2022. Thanks, guys. It's a lovely pod. That is so oh, thank you. beautiful. So happy we could help you on the drive. I am so sorry you listened to 36 straight hours of us. That's probably like 30 lessons. All right. All right. Is that the only uh, person joining? We're just doing one because we got a long episode today. Okay. Well, a Las Vegas guy. Local guy. Uh, local Las Vegas guy. I wonder if he left Las Vegas or did he go to Las Vegas? I would think he went to, you know what? Let us know. Homie, if you're in Las Vegas, we got to hit up a buffet back when that's going to be safe <laughs> in like three years. That's right. Uh, well, <laughs> welcome into the teacher's lounge where there is a buffet in the teacher's lounge this week. Uh, so, There's no COVID at the Mind University, so it's safe. No, we're fully vaccinated over here. And, um, you know, in the corner, you, you know, because you mentioned it, I have to tell you that <laughs> uh, in the corner by the buffet, <laughs> Professor Catherine Hahn is here. Oh. She is in the teacher's lounge this week. Um, she's kicked Jeremy Skinner a couple of times who's sleeping in the corner <laughs> of the teacher's lounge. Do you think she's our hottest teacher? Oh, by far. <laughs> by far. She's in her Mrs. Fletcher costume. Oh, 100%. Uh, so she's over there teaching just, um, you know, speech. Class. <laughs> speech, how to talk. She's amazing. So uh, thank you so much for giving us that five-star review. If you want to join the Teacher's Lounge, go give us a five-star review over Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to follow and subscribe and listen to this podcast on Spotify, SoundCloud, all the places that you listen. And if you got a friend out there that loves Marvel Comics, loves the Eternals, and you think they'll like this podcast, please share it to them. Because that's the best way that we'll grow this podcast is if you our listeners, our lovely Mind University students, share this podcast to your friends. Have That's a listening party. Bring back the listening party. Or listen to it in your car on a 36-hour drive as you're relocating to a new job. Or on your way to Eternals. There you go. That's exactly the way to do it. Uh, Ashley, where can they follow you on Instagram and Twitter? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GHL Podcast. Please send me pictures of a uh, sweet... <laughs> Sweet baby team. We can follow you on at GHL podcast. Huh? Yes. Uh, no. Where's your personal one? Oh boy. Um, I on we can't follow you there. Pilot. Uh, usually it's me answering, so you really can't follow it is me a, there. I will. I will follow out. Most, it, Ashley. Me, Ashley does run the Twitter account. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to swear. Um, take two. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. The V like Virico is very important. Please send me pictures of sweet baby Tiamat there. Yeah. Oh, sweet baby Tiamat. Jason, where can we find you on the social media? Uh, you can find me at Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and now we're hashtag stick around. Ashley, what's the final thing that we should talk about? You know, I was going to ask who your favorite Eternal was. And Verico. Do you have like a serious answer for that? No. That's, Did, that's fine. I, you know, I just don't. They all seem like the one they the none of them stand out to me. To, to me, they all blend together. There are a hundred of them. Yeah, too many. Too there many. are like five that I can tell you what they do, mm -hmm. and that's kind of it. Can I tell you the story of where I first encountered the celestials? Sure, you're gonna ruin our celestials, Jesus. I don't no, care. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you read measure me? The celestials? Um, there is a Fantastic Four issue. And it's very early. It's in the Chris Claremont Salvador La Roca run. Mm -hmm. And it's I think it's issue seven. And it's where it's it's where the um, Fantastic Four gets thrown into an alternate world. They get thrown into a different world and they don't know they're there and they're being fought by like all the Captain Britain Corps. And there's a moment where like these two gods, there's a god called Roma and the Celestials are there and Galactus is there. And they're all like kind of watching this as a chess match. And there is a moment where Franklin Richards like powers up mm -hmm. and the celestials become afraid of him mm -hmm. and that was the first time where i was like who are these like weird guys with dots on their faces and ever since then i've like sort of like kept the celestials to me are like even though i know they're not they're part of the fantastic four lore to me so it's not the one i wanted i don't know what you're doing ashley's pressing sound effects what are you doing i was trying to get the 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 action doing? figure spotlight and i was going to say that you have a franklin richards action figure oh, oh i don't you could have just asked me to do that instead of just pressing random buttons <laughs> look you get to mess up the sound effects i get to mess up the sound effects okay so what are we doing here uh jason has a really cool franklin richards action figure that's right it was given to me by ashley that's right yeah that's it it has a four and a half on it 
T-shirt. Yeah. We should end this. This podcast has gone off the rails. Do it. It's internally. Uh, thank you so much for listening. This has been Geek History Lesson. I'm uh, Jason uh, Verico Stan Inman. Oh, boy. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Ashley, close out the podcast, please. Class is dismissed.